Yeah, this morning on ITV on independent television. Now, we are looking at the role of the Faith Initiative and, uh, in Nigeria's election. And uh, we're going to be kick-starting with uh, Edo 2024. Now, uh, the, uh, what people will tell you ordinarily is that the church is not supposed to have candidates. But uh, we've seen a situation whereby that uh, organizations within the church, uh, you know, supporting one or two candidates and all that. So what is responsible for that? That's what we're going to be looking at uh, this morning. Uh, to discuss all this this morning, we're so privileged to have three guests. I've got uh, a barrister, Dan Ogbege, here on set, a political analyst. The barrister, Dan, very good morning to you. Thank you very much, Evans. Thank you for having me this morning. Okay. All right. So uh, I've got uh, two guests, too. I have uh, Mrs. Uh, Chachi uh, Naku. She's uh, the wife of the senior pastor, Destiny Family Assembly International, UK and Edo State. And I also have Edward Aselime. He's uh, an interfaith initiative coordinator in Abuja. He's joining us virtually. Yes, Edward, good morning. Good morning, Evans. Okay. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, and he. Yeah, gentlemen and the lady. Now, the, the, the idea, I'll start with Vice Dan Obege now. Yes. Uh, the idea of having interfaith, uh, you know, organizations trying to support one or two candidates and all that is becoming too worrisome. Because ordinarily, uh, the church is not supposed to come out. I mean, given the fact that the church cuts across all spheres of manner of people, all political parties and all that. But we've seen it recently that we have a situation whereby uh, organizations within uh, the church, and they tell you that, look, this is what they want to, this is why they are supporting uh, this candidate and all that. What's your response to it? Yeah, well, ordinarily, I can't say it is wrong for interfaith-based organizations to have their own candidates in the election. I can't say it is wrong if it's done within the confines of uh, what is responsible and what is cautionable. But we've also seen charlatans who uh, go around maligning other candidates just for their own preferred candidate to gain uh, traction. We've also seen that. So what I think should be done is for uh, uh, the Christian associations or Islamic associations to uh, much more regulate the activities of their members, mm -hmm. uh, especially during election seasons, so that charlatans will not uh, uh, give bad names to those who are actually credible. For me, uh, pastors or imams are human beings, they are members of the society, and I believe that uh, you know, what affects you know, the generality of the people also affects them. And I'm sure because they are part of the society, they also know that, okay, maybe this person will not be good for the society or this person will be better for the society. The program of this candidate is better or this person is history, you know, is also better. And we think that it will be in the best interest of uh, the people of our state or the country as the case may be. So it is not really wrong. It is just that there are few people which we've seen over the years who uh, try to take advantage of the exalted position as a religious leader to uh, throw tantrums in the public uh, space and uh, malign you know, candidate that they don't particularly fancy. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mr. Edward Asselime, you are an initiative of one of these um, you know, interfaith uh, organizi organizations. You are one of uh, the coordinators in the country. Now, uh, interfaith organizations cut across, uh, you know, denominations, hence uh, the go by the name non-denominational organizations. Now, it's been very worrisome that uh, these, uh, you know, initiatives, these organizations, uh, they support one or two uh, candidates. Is this not a misplacement of priority, uh, Mr. Edward? Churches coming up to endorse any candidates, but this interface you're talking about 
uh, associations formed by individuals or members of the church to help to promote okay, awareness on political matters and to help to also shape us into understanding of where manner and what we should look at in selecting the best candidate okay, for an election, whether we like it or not. We are Christians, we, we, we promote matters of faith. It is not a misplacement of priority at all. Because when these fellows come to power, they make policies, they execute them. It is not only on those that are not Christian. It is on Christians and everyone who is a citizen of such a country. Those laws all who understand to come up to educate the, the church, they need first. Because it's not just about endorsing this, uh, the, the particular candidate. First, they need that Christians should participate in matters of politics, in matters of elections, like in the election processes, okay, so that they also decide as if it's duty. All right, because a lot of Christians don't vote. So that the politics is a dirty game that yet we live in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, it is not for people. The church is in the sense that. Um, the church has different, uh, has so many people who belong to different parties come up to say, oh, well, there is also so association set up. It's not an explanation of parity at all because we are human beings and we must be whole in our, in our, in our day-to-day -day activities and in all that we do as a human being. Politics is part of all if we don't get it right, I'm very sure that the society will not be right. See, today, uh, major, the, the, the crime that is being uh, today increasing in, 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 in ratio that you cannot understand is the fact that climate on the ground, or people, uh, inflation is hitting the... You see crime everywhere. If you preach that what God... The great religion is taking care of the poor, the orphans, and are standing for the corruption of this world. It is our responsibility to get the right people in government so that we can have a better country, a better state, and have a better place of worship. Really, what the interface are doing, and I think that it is not out of place at all. Okay. All so right. That's, that's my take on this. Okay. All right, uh, Pastor Chatsi, uh, good to know that you are joining us from the UK this morning. Now, you hear situations whereby, at times, uh, members of these uh, interfaith uh, organizations in churches, uh, they even tell you that, that God spoke to them, that they saw it in vision, that X, Y, Z candidate is going to uh, emerge, you know, as uh, the next governor, as the next councillor, or as uh, the next uh, president. And uh, whether we like it or not, this uh, form, uh, you know, the position, the mindset of um, uh, the electorate, who are members of uh, this uh, uh, churches and who are members of this interfaith of uh, these organizations now uh, is this is this right i mean god speaks to everybody if god speaks to everybody and of course one tries to tell you that uh, it is what god tells him or her that's the most uh, uh, correct thing to do so th this becomes worrisome um thank you mr evans um on this is, um, is very clear. The um, spoken, you've spoken really well. From stand on the fact, right? Church endorse a candidate. It is not right. Um, for ministers to come up that heard from God concerning a particular candidate because first of all the measure to ascertain the truth the assertion because in time past endorsing friends in the name one and the same God God, according to first, 
first an author of confusion, God of peace. And uh, if you read that verse, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches of the saints. So A, that candidate A is the... He is also the chosen one, body of Christ. Vision for churches in politics ahead the undiluted world. Like the last speaker said, we all state, we all the community. The work of the Encourage the members to go to exercise their civil rights by voting to put the preferred person on the seat. You know, this is a spiritually. I mean, I don't want to go with that. I don't want to align with that because. Mm. It, it, what? What can you prove, or what? What as children that populist, you, you indeed heard from God, a woman of God. If there's somebody that God has revealed to you as the candidate, then you start praying for the success of that candidate, not imposing that candidate on your congregation who that believe in you. If they want to run along with your vision, they are free to run along with your vision. But not coming together as a group, as a body, under the umbrella of that God has endorsed. And everybody. Mm. All right, so uh, it appears we're having some uh, connectivity issue there. So, yeah. All right, so we, we should be able, we will be able to get back to Pastor Chatty mm -hmm. now. Uh, Dan Obege, yes. you know, Edo 2024 is around the corner. Uh, what we are looking for is uh, to know to what extent uh, should this interbase, uh, you know, f uh, faith organizations, uh, you know, really influence members? Because what I would like, to, I would like you to note, the influence that they have on members of, of churches is so bold. So to what extent should they influence their members? You know, in, it, happened, uh, uh, it happened in the last uh, general election, 2023. Mm. You saw how many pastors came on screen. There was one particular one that really got to many members of the society. And it was one of the reasons why we had that kind of frenzy in that last election. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had a description of the three leading candidates at the time, and he described one as a, a dragon, he described another one as a, somebody that was a, a deceiver, and a lot of things. And said the other one flew on ego's wing. Mm -hmm. But at the end, the one he said flew on ego's wing, they don't win. He was not declared a winner. You know, but I think pastors, I'm a Christian myself, I'm a minister of the gospel of Christ. I think pastors, you know, have to have at the back of their mind that their first calling is to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the first calling. And they should, as much as possible, try not to do anything that will bring uh, disdain or make people to speak ill of the gospel that has been handed to us. Mm. That is one point. Mm. But as I said before, it is not wrong for them to look at the candidates, maybe pray about it, or look at their agenda, look at what they represent, and say, okay, I think this one will be better. But they should not put pressure physically on their members. Mm. There were some that said in time past that if you vote for so so and so person, my prayer will not work for you. My prayer will be a cause on you. That is actually taking it too far. It is taking it too far. Mm. Elections around the corner again. We must be decent about it. We must be decent in our engagements. If you say, okay, you want to support somebody, then maybe you should quit the pulpit for a time and go on and support the person. 
Don't speak as though you are an oracle of God when you are actually not as far as that agenda is concerned. You just like this candidate and you want him to win. Only you feel that he's the most preferred candidate, he's better than the others. Let them know that it is you that is talking now. You know in the Bible, at times when Paul you know, wrote in the Bible, he said, I'm talking as Paul. So they should also say that, oh, I'm talking as this person and not as a pastor or as a man of God. Or it is not God that told me this. It is because I have looked at what they represent, look at their personality to see that this person would be better for a do state. All right, so uh, 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 Edward As Asulime, you are one of the coordinators of uh, uh, CVBN. Uh, CVBN is an acronym that stands for Christians, uh, Christian Volunteers for Better uh, Nigeria. Now, uh, during the last presidential election, uh, during the last presidential election, we saw uh, whereby your interfaith initiative organization uh, actually came out to support one of the candidates in the presidential election. And in this Edo 2024 now, we understand that you are also, uh, you know, tilting your support towards a particular, uh, you know, candidate. In that last presidential election, the candidate you supported did not win. Uh, I mean, uh, this time now, you're supporting a candidate that is of different political party from the one you supported in the last presidential election. So the question is, uh, why don't you stay put, uh, you know, if you believe on a particular political party, why don't you stay put there? Other than you support one candidate in a party this time, then the next time you support another candidate in another party. I'm a better Nigeria. It's not a political party. Just as we, I think in the last, um, Meeting in a ghost state, I suppose we were there. He has certainly declared that I might not be able to explain time in mean, this uh, platform. But that for better Nigeria. Volunteers, all Christians, volunteers. Why was this set up? It was set up on the ground, the fact that we see they will not participate in elections, and most of them do not vote. This background understanding that look, this is a dirty game. That was not. That is not true, and uh, we need to do something to, about that. As I said, it's not a political party. So we, I candidates, individuals, why the way it is? It's not about the political party. It's about the person. Find good people in APC, in PDP, in Labour, just like that. It's close. As we sensitize the people to participate in the election, okay, to 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 participate in the processes. All through, look at the candidates. Look at five things most of the time. These things fear the Lord. A man that does not fear the Lord cannot love the people, will not be able to deliver the dividend of democracy. Declare to us as Christians and give you grace to do so. Although God can help a man to more sacrifice when he has so much power in his hands. Only does the person have capacity. When you talk about capacity, you're looking at education. Does he have the requisite education? Has he done anything before? Well, has he worked? Has he managed five people before the place of managing the thousands of people? Has he managed one million? The place of managing billions of naira? What exactly has he been able to do? We provide these people along this direction. What does the people want? Has this person been able to do for the people even before he come into politics or other positions where he has served before? What is the ability of this person to manage crisis? Because when you have a lot of people to manage, you should be sure that look, come. Now, when we look at this, we will definitely, and we are not a church, we are an association, come out to do, and to say, based on this, this is what we, this is what we have seen in this candidates, this is who we are giving our support to. And we will begin to work that such a candidate wins. Mm -hmm. That does not win, does not mean that that candidate was not the palace who were concerned. Economy is talking about oh, why this happened, why that not happen. We are not a political party. We are not speaking to a political party when it comes to election. We stick. You know, we look at individuals with credible records. Give the different, deliver the democracy, and get us out of this quagmire we find ourselves. 
And in a do, you know that this time we're supporting ABC. No, no, you, we, 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 we don't we won't let you say that. that. We, I, we, know, we, I know you know that it's not a campaign plan, but I know. Yeah, but we are not going to let you question. do that now. You can't. We're not going to let you do that. All right, so, all right, so we, we won't let you do that now. Now, uh, Pastor Chati, uh, over to you now. The concern most times is that, um, you know, at times when these interfaith-based organizations, when they come out to support a particular candidate, and that candidate wins. Now, uh, after four years or eight years, as the case may be, uh, at times uh, people may, they are tended to regret. I mean, uh, you know, that... Uh, Okay, if they had known, they would not have supported this person and all that. So I want to uh, give an opinion on this. Okay, thank you. Um, support a candidate to come on board. And after the tenor, you start uh, in regrets or whatever. The question that comes to my mind is expectations were not met the state at large, not as individual units, not as the churches. Was it that you were expecting something more than just praying into office? No, not uh, a campaign platform. I want us to bear in mind is that when a governor is instituted in office, and before he came on board, he read out so loud and clear for the old um, and here, and he came on board, you start judging him by that manifest. Is it that he did not deliver? Is that why you are now uh, having that regret that, oh, we shouldn't have supported this person, or is it because of your own individual needs? Looking at the government that is on board now, I came on board, he read out his yeah, manifest. Let us be careful. What I don't I want us to campaign. To yeah, Pastor Chati, Pastor Chati. The manifesto he read out. Pastor I Chati, I, I, don't want to, to I, don't want to, I don't want us to campaign on this platform. We've able to satisfy manifest. We can start looking at, oh, let's look for things that might be better. Church, I want to say this. A governor comes on board. Duty of the to pray to God. The Bible also tells us that the heart of the king, hand of God. If you look at Proverbs 21, verse 1, his heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water turn it as to ever he will. He can sit up in prayers. At least sit up in prayers. Looking for position or looking for her how uh, they can be supported in their ministries in one way or the other, but sincerely sit up in prayer, go to God in prayer, fasting and prayer, interceding for this. Going wrong, stop. God will always breathe inside his people. Talk too much about, you know, can it, they, but we are in the country, Nigeria, we know what is going on now in our nation that have the heart for the things of God are coming together to pray, change the narratives in areas befitting the citizens. That is the position I always maintain as a church. Somebody has eventually emerged, judged by the antecedents, pleased by the antecedents. We have to be truthful in our judgment. Be judge, judging out of sentiment because we know somebody that will benefit us one way or the other. We should be truthful in our judgment. Has this person met up in running the affairs of this state? Has and the person is about to leave and is bringing somebody as his successor. Of course, you know that the person will follow in the same line. So why not support that person? Why not going to another party? What is the reason for now going to look for another candidate that you don't even know that you have not trusted, that you have not tested, or you have not trusted? Yeah, let us be careful. I, I don't so want us to campaign on this platform. Excuse I said that a while ago. Yeah, continue. Go on. You didn't, you, you're not hearing me. Yeah, I, I said I don't want us to campaign. Uh, you know, we're, we're not campaigning for any political party on this platform. No, no, no. I'm not campaigning. Not campaigning. I'm only stating a fact. You talk, it, it talks about the position of the church. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We are Christians. We are in the state. We are seeing what the, 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 the present uh, government is doing in the state as a church. 
be able to judge as a church, as Christians, your members. That's what, that's what I said from the beginning. We don't tell our members who to vote for. We diluted word of God on the pulpit, yes, to the members. And we tell them to vote according to their conscience. Conscience is where I'm trying to you know more light into why certain things should be how they should be. Conscience, somebody is. Mm. All right, uh, Pastor Chatty, we, we will be able to reestablish uh, contact with you uh, as we get on, on the show. Now, Barrister Dan Obege, I want to speak on these expectations. Uh, you know, uh, interfaith organizations supporting the candidates, and of course, maybe the candidate did not live up to expectation when it becomes uh, the governor. Uh, so, uh, shed more light on it. Well, as Pastor Chatty was saying just now, uh, sometimes expectations vary. Mm. You know, some people expect personal gratification. Mm, that's what she said. So they expect that, oh, because I supported you in that election, I ought to have been patronized personally, mm. as an individual. Mm. They won't look at maybe rules were done, schools were built, workers were paid as I went due, mm. you know, other schools were opened up, areas were opened up, technology and things like that, opportunities were created for a uh, private entrepreneurship to thrive. They won't look at that. But they will look at, oh, I supported you, I was vociferous in my support of you, and at the end, you did not do anything. They're talking about themselves, and not about the society at large. Mm. But we must, as much as possible, try to subjugate our own personal needs, what we want as individuals, you know, to what the society actually needs. Yeah, the when we say individual them. needs now, that becomes yes, a little bit personal. Most often not, uh, governance is, it, is not yes, most personal. Often not, it is, yes, most of it are not. People that complain to say this government did not do anything, it is actually talking about, oh, I supported this government, they did not do anything for me, they did not remember me, or oh, he stopped picking my call. But as the governor don't work for majority of the people of the society, that is, that is what we should look at. We should look, we should look at that. Has there been governance? Has the civil service been professionalized and transformed? You must look at that. Have link roads been built? You must look at that. Have roads been repaired? You must look at that. Are the streets cleaner than they were before? We must look at that. So those are the things. So we must caution ourselves. And we must be very careful. Now, these things you are mentioning now, yes. they are also individual based. I mean, for you, yes, the roads may not have been well. built, but for me, roads have been built. That's what I'm saying. So, they are individual based. Yeah. For, uh, they, they, uh, but some yeah. people who supported a governor mm. that is outgoing, for instance, mm. they are not going to be looking at it from a general perspective. They will look at it from the personal Perspective. Okay, let me pause you so that yes. we wrap it up now. Now, uh, uh, Pastor Chatsi, quickly, I uh, will give you 30 seconds to wrap up quickly. Um, thank you so much. Mm. My submission to the church, according to the scriptures in Romans 13, verse 1, teaches that all are not respected and obeyed. When any leader is put in office, it is the duty of the church to continue to pray for those in governance to teach rightly. Thank you. Mm. All right, all right, thank you so much. And uh, Edward Aswili, Mayor, what are your parting words on this uh, topic this morning? Thank you very much for organizing such to tell the church and the interface to continuously pray because no authority can to be without the Lord. For the last election, we had 180 days of prayer to see that the nation is peaceful. So, yeah, to be this more calm. election, we will keep to pray, encourage others to pray, invite other people to participate and carry out the civil duties. Mm. God bless you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, quickly, Barrister Dan, 20 seconds now. <laughs> uh, yes, I want to advise the people not to take everything 
uh, people who claim to be interface, uh, I mean, interfaith uh, oh, leaders. Yeah. I mean, they should scrutinize everything they say, mm. and they should look at all the candidates that are presenting themselves. They should choose the one with the track record, the one that has capacity, the one that is able to articulate this agenda for the people, and not just the one the person say, oh, vote for this person. Mm. Yes. Okay. They should oh. on their own make a choice. Okay. All right. So thank you, uh, the two gentlemen, uh, Edward Asulime, an interfaith uh, coordinator in uh, Abuja, and uh, he's been in Edo State, but he's based in Abuja. And of course, I also have Pastor Chachi Anako, wife of senior pastor, Destiny Family Assembly International, Edo State and the UK, and Barrister Dan Ogbege, a political analyst. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.